Hi, this is Kanava Bro. This part three of serialization in C sharp dot net. In the last class we discussed about binary serialization. In this video we will discuss about SOAP serialization. So initially we must know what is SOAP. SOAP is Simple Object Access Protocol. That right? SOAP is actually a message transfer protocol. Uh, SOAP is a format which is generally used to transfer the messages via network. SOAP will communicate with internet. SOAP is platform independent and SOAP is language independent. SOAP is developed based on XML. As we already know, XML is a universal markup language. So SOAP can understand by any platform or any operating system. Anyone can understand SOAP. Is it clear? SOAP can uh, uh, SOAP data can be transferred uh, via firewalls also. SOAP is a W3C recommendation. Is it it was accepted by W3C. Generally in web services, whenever you are trying to work with web services, generally in web services what will happen means, here let us assume in web services this is my service consumer and this is my server. Are you following? So actually here what is this is my server and this is what service consumer. Service consumer means the person who will consume the service. Service, uh, service provider means uh, the uh, application where the uh, service is available. Is it clear? Something like, for example, if you consider here, ICIC Bank is what service provider. ICIC Bank is service provider, and BookMyShow.com is service consumer. Is it clear? Service consumer will consume the service in order to BookMyShow.com here it is doing some business. Business means where the money transfer is there. So the, whenever it is trying to do some business, it must have what? Link with some banking website. Are you following? So here the communication between service consumer and server, that is service provider, is due to HTTP protocol. HTTP is called as a communication protocol, which is used to transfer the data, the request to the server, and the response again will go back to the client. But here the request is nothing but what object. Whatever the request that is going to the server is what object. But we cannot directly send object via net network. So this object is converted into what? SOAP. And this SOAP was given to whom? HTTP. And this HTTP will transfer. HTTP will transfer this SOAP message to the service provider. So that is, uh, it will reach to the server. Are you following everyone? And the response what it is giving, the, here the server will give some response. This is nothing but this object is which object? Request object. Request object. And here whatever the response that is coming, the response is which object? Response object. But again we cannot directly send object via network. Again this response object is again converted into what? SOAP. Is it clear? And this SOAP was given to whom? HTTP. Here HTTP is a communication protocol, SOAP is a message transfer protocol, I hope you understood. So here, whatever the request that is sending, this request is actually an object, but we cannot directly send object via network. Is it clear? So definitely we need to convert this object into stream of bytes. And that uh, converting object into stream of bytes is called a serialization. So here we are converting this object in the form of what? SOAP and send this SOAP to HTTP. Here SOAP is like a loading truck. HTTP. SOAP is like a load. HTTP is like a truck. So the truck is moving from one place to another place. So in the truck what is the load is also there. It doesn't mean that load is going from one place to another place. It means that here this truck is taking the load from one place to another place. So here HTTP is taking this SOAP request to uh, server. I hope you understood. Whatever the request you are sending, that request is object. That object is converted to what? SOAP. And that SOAP was given to whom? HTTP. So SOAP is a message transfer protocol. SOAP is like a, like a envelope cover. Envelope cover, is it clear? And that cover was given to postman. Postman will take that cover from one place to another place. Here HTTP is like a postman. SOAP is like an envelope cover. I hope you understood. So now let us see the architecture of what SOAP. SOAP architecture comes of something like this. So, so here you see I have written something like what? SOAP envelope. 
So open will up is a container tag which contains starting element and ending element. And then here you can see soap header. And here you can see soap body. Within the soap body you can see soap fault. Actually if you observe clearly, soap is like an envelope as I just told right now. Envelope means this is an envelope cover. Yes or no? And this envelope cover, what is there? Header will be there. Header means it comes up from information to information. From address and to address. That information will be available in header. And body. Body comes of again, the actual message, whatever you want to send. That message will be available inside where? Body. The actual message, whatever you have to send, that message is available inside where? Body. And if any, at the time of sending the message, if any exception will occur, or if any error will occur, that error messages are uh, logged under SOAP fault. SOAP fault is used to maintain the exception information. Or for instance, SOAP envelope is, as SOAP is an XML file, every XML file must have a root element. Here the root element is SOAP envelope. SOAP header, it comes of the application specific information, like the authentication details, the payment details, uh, the request um, uh, information, this all the information will be available in SOAP header. SOAP body, this element comes of the actual data, whatever you want to send, the data is injected inside where SOAP body, when it was passed via internet. And this SOAP was given to whom? HTTP. HTTP will uh, uh, transfer that uh, SOAP data via network. I hope you understood. So in the last example, we have designed this one. Enter student number, student name, address. And here I have two buttons. One is serialize, other one is deserialize. Yes or no? So here I created one class. The name of the class is student. And I marked this class with serializable attribute. And I declared three variables. S number, S name and address. And here I declared one parameterized constructor. And this is my screen. And here, whenever you want to work with what? Uh, soap serialization. So we need to add the DLL file. So how do you add that one? Right click on references, add reference, go to .NET. There you can find a tab, uh, namespace called system dot runtime dot serialization dot formatters dot soap. Somewhere it will be there. You can check that one. System dot runtime dot here you can see serialization dot formatters dot soap. Click on OK. Then only the namespace is highlighted here. So I will declare the namespace. Are you following? So here in order to work with SOAP serialization, we are having a predefined class. That is nothing but SOAP formatter. SOAP formatter s is equals to new SOAP formatter of. Is it clear? Now here I will try to uh, double click on button. I will create an object for what? Um, file stream. fs is equals to new file stream of. So here I want to create a file in D drive. D column slash the name I will give as student.xml file because soap is also xml file comma and here I want to create a file so I will use file mode file mode dot create comma and I want to give the permission to access the file file access dot write means I want to write the data in that particular file is it clear so initially I want to store all the values in the variable so I will declare one variable int s number is equals to into that parse of here I will try to write text box one dot text and similarly here I will try to declare one more variable string s name is equals to text box two dot text and here I will declare one more variable string address is equals to text box three dot text is it clear now I will create an object for student class student s1 is equals to new student of I will try to pass the values something like s number comma s name comma address is it clear? So now here what is the meaning of this one object is created at the time of creating the object the constructor is also called and the values are initialized for s number, s name and what? The address and the reference variable is s1. Now we cannot directly store the object in where? File. Right? If you want to convert object into, if you want to store the data object into file permanently, we have to convert the object into stream of bytes. That concept is called as serialization. So I am trying to using SOAP formatter to convert the object into a stream of bytes and store in the form of file in which format? SOAP format. So S1 dot, there is a predefined method called what? Serialize method. So I will already create an object for SOAP formatter. So S dot, the method name is serialize. Serialize of FS. 
comma yes one fs comma yes one and here i will write message box message box dot show off and here data is serialized so actually what is happening here so at this step object is created and here at this step object is created and memory is allocated for what instance variable s number s name and what the address and here the reference variable is created s1 here the reference variable is created s1 and then the reference variable will point to what object actually now what is the meaning of serialize what serialize will do the serialize will convert the object into soap format and store in where fs go and check in d drive there is an xml file with name student.xml is created that is in soap format so i will try to debug and i will check the output student number 101 student name anil address hyderabad i will give now click on serialize now data is serialized so here i will try to open my file. there you see this is my file that is the soap format soap envelope soap body is it clear here you see now whatever the data that you have saved the data that object data is converted into soap format that is the concept of referring soap serialization so how to deserialize that one if you want to deserialize double click on what deserialize and here what to do the same code what you written previously for what bind deserialization here you can write something like what again i will use file stream so i will write fs is equal to new file stream of i will stop the debugging and here i will write fs is equal to new file stream of here i will write file mode dot open because i want to open the file and file access dot read because i want to read the data from the file are you following and then i will try to uh, call that method s dot what is the method name deserialize deserialize of fs and uh, what is the meaning of this whatever the data that is available in the file again this deserialize method what it will do it will convert that file into object format and store in the variable which variable student s is equals to here i'll write our student s1 is equals to type cast with what student so what deserialize method is doing this deserialize method is converting the soap into again object format whatever the object, data that is available in the fs that is soap format now this deserialize will convert that soap into object and the store in s1 so here i want to display the output text box one dot text text box one dot text is equals to s1 dot text box one dot text is equals to s1 dot what s number and similarly text box two dot text is equals to s1 dot s name are following similarly text box three dot text is equals to s1 dot address i think this s number is integer i will convert into what string so press f5 and check the output dc realize so here what is happening whatever the data that is available in which format soap format this soap format is again convert into what object format is it that is the concept of deserialization so i hope you understood right serialization means converting object into stream of bytes deserialization means converting stream of bytes into what object right for more videos you can subscribe to my youtube channel and facebook group in the next video i will discuss about xml serialization thank you have a nice day